Okay, uh, I'm Dave, and this is Mike, and we're Zebra Equine Technologies. Um, at Zebra, we create uh, competitive, uh, cutting-edge horse equipment. And horse boots are the most residually purchased uh, protective uh, piece of horse equipment uh, by horse owners. <clears throat> so in, in just riding horses, horses have the propensity to strike its legs against each other during competition or even just riding. And this can cause irreparable damage to their tendons. But horse boots were designed originally to guard against injury from impact. The traditional horse boots have one major problem. They trap heat inside of the horse's leg. They essentially cook the horse's tendons while we're riding them or during competition. And this has been substantiated by, by medical equine medical studies as well as its common knowledge in the horse industry that you just don't leave horse boots on longer than you have to because of this damage. But this uh, damage can occur. It can happen uh, anywhere from slight inflammation up to crippling tendon failure. So horse boot companies have traditionally tried to perforate materials that they use in horse boots and to try to create some sort of airflow in the horse's boots, which have not given hardly any change to that uh, crippling temperature inside of the horse's legs. And so this leaves one option for uh, a horse owner, and that is to ice the horse's legs down after this damage has happened through the traditional horse boots or leave the horse off for multiple weeks to let this damage uh, rehabilitate through that time. And so uh, being a competitor myself, I w wondered if there was some way that I could prevent it, uh, use some preventative measures during competition or even just riding that I wouldn't have to re rehabilitate my horse's uh, legs afterwards. So that's where the Z-Boot comes in. The Z-Boot contains a cooling pack which is filled with phase change material or PCM. PCM is an engineered wax that absorbs heat from a heat source. And this surrounds the horse's tendons. The, the PCM starts as a solid and it melts into a liquid as it is absorbing this damaging heat. So it's uh, taking that damaging heat that would otherwise be cooking the horse's tendons and saves it in the horse, in the, in the Z-boot. Now the PCM has an absorption limit that once it uh, absorbs as much as it can, the rider can take the boot off and air it out, or they can dip it into a bucket of water and accelerate the recharging process and use it just a few minutes afterwards. So the, the, just to give you a background on the temperature, we consider anything over 100 degrees Fahrenheit uh, the danger zone for a horse's tendons. And the, with the Z-boot, uh, we keep that temperature well below that danger level. At, at 100 degrees or higher, the collagen cells inside of the tendons start to die rapidly. Just like uh, a fever in a human, it doesn't take much of a temperature rise to have uh, damaging effects from that temperature. But the, the Z-boot is... Uh, capable of keeping that consistently in the safe temperatures while the competitor's boots are, are around 100 degrees and higher in most cases. And that's across the board with all of our competitors uh, keeping that uh, temperature in those danger zones on the horse's legs. But the most special thing about the Z-boot is it offers a warning system to the riders. And we put a Bluetooth temperature sensor inside of the boot that repairs with the rider's phone and reports real-time temperatures and warns the rider when those temperatures get too hot. Now, the Z-Boot, um, let's see. 
The Z, the the competitors, the only game that they play is impact protection, and we beat them at their own game. In this video, we did a, a test where we did we ran the Z Boots impact protection layer against the top industry's uh, competitor boot padding that they use in their boot through three tests. We wanted to see which padding would protect against a, a hammer blow by protecting a, a, a thin piece of glass under the padding. Then we took a bowling ball and dropped it on a concrete floor onto the padding to see which one would absorb the, the impact of the bowling ball. And then we put it over a concrete slab to see which padding would protect the concrete slab against the bowling ball dropping onto it. So. That looks like a. Is there a way to play that video? Okay, great. Well, the the to explain the video, basically the the piece of glass was protected under the Z boot padding, and it uh, just a slight blow under the competitor's padding, the the grass the glass completely shattered, and. In this picture, the uh, the Z boot protected the concrete slab, while the concrete slab underneath the competitor's boot uh, actually landed on my toe and hurt my toe. So, it's uh, the uh, the competitor's padding allows any impact to transfer directly into the horse's leg, whereas our over-engineered horse boot allows the impact layer to take that blunt force. So, in summary, the Z boot offers the substantial uh, cooling technology and and protects the horse's tendon from the damaging heat. The Bluetooth sensor gives empowers the, the rider to have real-time temperatures through the Bluetooth sensor to their smartphone. And with the impact protection, the the impact absorption technology is superior to anything that a that a horse owner can have. And then overall, with the patent pending, patent pending technology, it's an overall better protection for the horse. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. So I'm now going to tell you about the amazing market. I'm now going to tell you about the amazing market that we're about to go into uh, and dominate. So there are... There are almost 10 million horses in the United States with uh, a few million outside in other countries. Um, horse boots are, like Dave said, are one of the items that uh, horse owners buy most often on a recurring basis. In fact, most horse owners purchase about two pairs of horse boots per year per horse. And the reason why is because, think about it, horse boots are in an extremely dirty, muddy, mucky, rambunctious environment. And no matter how well you build your horse boot, eventually the owner is going to get tired of scraping mud off of their, off of their old dirty boots. Uh, and to add to that, horse boots have an aesthetical value to, to the horse, and they, the, the owners like to keep them nice. And that's why they come in, in different colors. We've got, uh, these are just a couple of the colors that we offer uh, on our website. So uh, the... Uh, not everyone uses horse boots. Um, some, uh, some, people, some horses are used for ranch riding and just kind of casual trail riding and, and, and dude ranches. Uh, but we conservatively estimate that the market is about 12 to $16 million per month uh, for horse boots. Now, we understand that this is a niche market. Uh, we aren't going after a worldwide audience, and that's OK. Uh, the, the thing about our competition is, is they are moribund and stagnant. They have not innovated in decades. If you go down to Cal Ranch and buy a pair of horse boots, that, that pair of horse boots will be identical to the ones they were selling 30 or 40 years ago. And we feel that by combining superior products with cutting edge technology, that we can dominate this vertical industry. Um, something that is uh, a, a side note, but interesting about our customer, is they usually have expendable income. 
Uh, horses are extremely expensive, and they're they're even they're, they're very expensive to maintain. Uh, uh, and a horse owner usually doesn't balk at buying a higher quality product to protect that that expense that 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 investment. Uh, we feel like as a company, we feel it's important to maintain firm roots in the traditional equine world, uh, while also understanding something that our, our competition ignores. And that is, even though their products haven't changed, their market has changed drastically. The customer has changed drastically. The average cowboy or cowgirl has a smartphone in their pocket and are wearing a smartwatch while they're riding a horse. And we feel that just like wearables have really taken off for humans, that there's a huge opportunity to introduce wearables to the equine world and, and, uh, and dominate that industry in that way. So um, as a company, uh, we have already created a marketable version of the Zebu. Th this is it. Uh, and in fact, this is actually kind of a refined second version based on previous field testing and customer feedback. And we are selling and fulfilling orders right now off of our website. We started to uh, do pre-sales uh, earlier this year in, and uh, then started regular sales uh, in October. And although still modest, we doubled our sales from uh, October in November. And being halfway through the month now, we are on track to double our sales from November in this month in December. Uh, and about 10% of our customers have already uh, come back to, to reorder product. Um, we were producing the boot in China, but because of the Trump tariff, that made it financially impossible to continue that. So we moved um, almost all of our, our manufacturing to the United States. Uh, and we currently do the final cut and sew assembly uh, in-house with our own sewers right here in Utah. And to our knowledge, we are now the only horse boot that is made in the USA for American cowboys and cowgirls. Um, the, uh, and as, as we can see here, we are, without asking, we are getting some pretty fantastic organic customer reviews. Uh, people post on our, on our page and post on, on their pages and tag us. And uh, anyway, we, we've, uh, we're, we're surprised with, uh, with how well it has been accepted. Um, now, we humbly acknowledge that anything that we put down for a growth rate will probably be off. Um, and so, based on what we have done so far and the amazing returns we're getting off of our, our advertising, uh, we did a modest projection for the first 12 months. We did a constant growth rate, and then we lowered that for uh, the, the quarters thereafter. But no matter what we put in, that's pretty much what we're looking at for our gross profit margin in EBITDA. Uh, and actually, our gross profit margin, we are confident that we'll get that up to about 65 to 70% uh, based on efficiencies that we've already realized uh, for our, our subsequent inventory orders. Uh, and in terms of growth, we've, uh, we've only been advertising on social media and uh, selling directly off of our website. And we've already uh, targeted certain uh, online and print venues that we will be that we'll be going after in the near future and next month we'll be uh, in Dallas at the WESA conference that's WESA which uh, every single buyer in the world that works for a Cal Ranch or an IFA will be at that conference and we feel that we'll, that will launch us into the retail world so what we're currently looking for is a minimum of about $250,000. Uh, the main strategy with these funds is to uh, take sales to the next level and also purchase a small uh, subsequent round of inventory, uh, which we're running low on. We have about a two and a half month lead time on inventory reorders. And uh, so an increased increases in marketing also means uh, pulling the trigger on, on inventory. Uh, $250,000 is our minimum. Uh, if we do have the successes we are hoping for in our sales, then we will, could need up to $450,000 to aid in our inventory reorders. And uh, in terms of what we're offering to the investor, we are flexible with uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of terms. 
What we propose is a convertible note uh, with safe terms over 36 months and a 12% uh, interest rate. And lastly, I uh, just wanted to, uh, to end with, with who we are. Uh, Dave here is not only my partner, but he's my brother. Uh, he is a horse owner. He's a champion team roper. He won't, he's too modest, he won't tell you that. Uh, and he is the inventor of the Z-Boot. Uh, this was his idea. Uh, I am the, I'm, I'm a tech and manufacturing expert, and I've provided all of the seed capital uh, for this venture up to this point. Uh, I'm more of the city slicker of the family, but he did get me to wear horse boots. Um, and then Mark Hurst, I don't know if any of you have, have ever heard of, them, of him. He's uh, pretty well known here in Utah. He is a branding and marketing genius and was actually the creator of Utah's Life Elevated brand. That was kind of his final project, but has worked with many Fortune 500 companies and is uh, on our cap table to help us uh, make Zebra an awesome brand. Anyway, thank you very much. Okay, Mike and Dave, we're going to open it up to questions right now. And just as a reminder to everyone here, um, per COVID, we'll just hold the microphone for you and feel free to ask your question uh, when it's brought to you. Raise your hand. Uh, really interesting, guys. So um, several questions, and uh, just feel free to give quick responses. So the, the, the cooling packet, that's not ice that you have to freeze. It, it's chemical-based? Um, ours is an organic plant-based wax, and so the wax melts, and it absorbs all of that heat from the horse's leg, but then when it cools, it solidifies back up and is ready for another use. Huh, and did you guys invent that, or is that something that's just on the market? And yeah, phase change material is a very widely used uh, product on oh, the market okay. for a lot of uses. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with that. And, um, but the, the way you're integrating that into the boot, is, is that what the patent is, is protecting, or? Uh, correct, yeah, okay. uh, that's exact, exactly what we've patented. Okay. And, and nobody else is doing anything like this? Uh, you cannot find anything on the market that, uh, that is available f that, that does what we do. There have been studies that have been done that have, have done things, research uh, articles and, and studies have been done that are similar to that, but, but no, nothing has been, nothing is on the market. It is, it could be a trophy. We'll, we'll talk about that. Depends on if you invest, you know. All right, thanks. Great job. Thank you. A couple of quick questions. Um, mainly is, I, I've been in the horse business a long time. You know, if you remember Infohorse.com, one of the original founders sold it off, but, and Carbor Cure for Horses, if you know that, we had that also. Um, the question I have is, with show horses and with a lot of equine, I don't want a name on, the, on my boots. You know, it's, it's my horse. I mean, it's the horse. It's, your name's a little big for a competitor in, in, the, in the marketplace. Have you addressed that? Or even looking at sponsorships to being on the boot. I mean, there's some, some ways to, to get that money now even, saying we'll, we'll put on a line of boots like Nike does. I mean, I, I'm thinking you guys need to start putting on a whole line of boots for horses with sponsorships, with colors, et so you don't have to say everything has a big Z on it. If, if I'm going to show horse or Western horse show, um, I'm all of a sudden saying to myself, you know, Z is kind of cool, but it's not what I want. Um, I know you have some colors, but the question is, you could bring in another, you know, sponsorship and have, you know, extra cash right off the bat on a couple things. Yeah, that's a, a great point. And uh, because the competitors or in the show ring and in rodeo, uh, they are surprisingly... Uh, uh, they love accessorizing. In fact, one of our competitors has the outfit of the week for, for their horses, which is matching boots with a matching blanket with a matching uh, pants for the rider, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So um, those sort of options, we've been uh, asked by colleges to have their colors with their logo on the boots and things like that. But uh, we will entertain uh, things like that in the future, but those get into, uh, with, with all of the variants, with having front and rear boots, which are completely different, with having uh, left and right boots and uh, different colors associated with those. There's just so many variants that you can handle, especially as a startup. 
Well, I'm thinking now is the time to, to sell off some rights. You know, I mean, you're looking at raising funds. I mean, the other question was the funds. I didn't see an equity share. All I said was this is my return on my investment. Any VC capitalist, most investors can say, well, there's nothing in it. I can go to my other people and get money and have a piece of the action. So my question, are you going to address that if somebody wants to give you money on this? Yeah, again, we are flexible with, uh, with any uh, arrangement, and we can, we can uh, definitely have those, uh, you know, uh, at any time. But, uh, but yeah, we have, we've talked extensively about, about sponsorships and, and, uh, and exactly what you're talking about, and we, we do plan to, to do all of those things. We, uh, in, in some of our, our initial searches, we, we haven't uh, determined that some of those uh, selling off rights and things like that have, have uh, uh, proven to give us what we need as a, as a startup, so we kind of uh, haven't uh, revisited that again, but I'm definitely willing to. It's a, it's a fantastic suggestion. I, mean, I, I know the horse, horse market is, I mean, your numbers are low. I mean, you, you know, just the, if you just, one of the things you should have put up there is how much money an average horse owner makes. This is sustained. I mean, it's, you know, 600 bucks a month to keep the horse in Florida. So it just, it's expensive. Um, the question I other have is, you know, there's some other options to look at. I mean, yeah, Zebra's great, but you could actually sell this to somebody like, and I'm, I'm being out of the box, Nike, and say, Nike, you can produce this. You just sell the rights to it all. They can ha step into the horse arena, which they'd love to do, you know, mass produce. You could walk away with a lot of cash, huge amount of things, and a percentage, let them take it over and just have Nike for horses. I mean, this is some really, because it's, it's a huge market. Yeah, let's talk. I'm fully open to that option. I, lo I like Nike. OK, I'm going to check the online here. Um, what is the max order you can produce at this time? Um, the max, well, we have 500 boots in inventory. Anything that's funding our current online sales. Uh, and anything beyond that, uh, we're looking at doing a, a pre-order and then sending it off for manufacturing and waiting a couple months for it to get back. Uh, but we can do any any size. If it can be a thousand or twenty-five thousand, we can we can handle it. So you say it's a two to two and a half months lead time for the product. What is the main challenge with, uh, with the manufacturing or the lead time there? So the, the main challenge is the cooling pack. Um, it has never been done before, uh, and it's, it's obvious why. I, I, I think that there are probably just a handful of manufacturers in the world that can build the cooling pack from start to finish. Uh, and the... The neoprene shell and the padding on the outside, we're only looking at about a month uh, on that piece. But the cooling pack um, has to have layers to be laminated. Spandex has to be laminated. We have to get the sensor made uh, in time. And hopefully, there aren't any back orders on resistors or batteries or, or things like that. Uh, we send that to Illinois, where we have that manufactured. And then they finally do a, the process of putting the sensor in the cooling pack sealing it together, uh, uh, die cutting it, and then finally sending it to us for the final cut and sew. So that's, that's the biggest piece. Do you expect that lead time to go down with higher volumes or? Yes, absolutely. And um, this, is our, this is our MVP. Uh, and we have already found other ways to be far more efficient uh, in manufacturing. And so, so yes, we, we think that we can get that down to even 45 days in the future. Um, I don't remember if I saw it on the slides, but did you talk about the your price versus your competitor's price? How do they compare? Uh, good question. We had that on a previous slide, and an investor told us to get rid of it uh, when we presented it to him. So um, I guess everybody's different, right? Uh, the the low end market is around uh, 60 to 90 dollars a pair for a pair of horse boots. Uh, we have the, the Z boot on our website for 159.99. And um, one thing that we, we didn't talk about is to 
we're we're getting plenty. Well, we're getting some some promising sales. Uh, in fact, we were we had a sale at ninety nine dollars for the for the Z boot, and we had a mentor tell us raise your price, and so we put it up to what we were planning to do one fifty nine ninety nine, and sales have actually increased, and so has profitability. Uh, one thing that we haven't talked about is if we take the cooling pack out of this boot, that is a normal competitor horse boot. And, but because of our superior impact protection, uh, we plan to compete with the competitors on that level. That one will be probably more around 90 to 90 to $95, kind of the high end of the regular horse boot market. So we plan to, and it's a lot higher uh, profit margin. Uh, the, the gross profit is higher on that. Because um, just my thought along with that is when, when I go onto your website, can you, because you said people buy these like throughout the year, right? Um, can you buy like just the, the, the guard without the cooling pack? I mean, do you need to keep buying the whole thing with more cooling packs? And, and then you could sell more at a cheaper price once they've bought the cooling pack itself. Uh, yeah, right now you can only buy the Z-Boot, uh, but we plan on offering shortly what we're calling the shields boot uh, that is kind of that regular without the cooling pack uh, boot. So yes, that will be available very shortly. And the nice thing about offering that boot is it really, it doesn't really add to our production costs at all. We just have to not include the cooling pack. Is there any significance to the zebra name? And if so, what, what is that? Um, zebra is debatably the origin of the horse. And our whole brand has been to try to keep his horse to its most natural state, even though we are asking somewhat unnatural things from its body to compete or even just uh, carrying a, a, a rider and, and all the tack that they have to. So uh, Zebra kind of explained that uh, uh, origin uh, plus the, uh, the A to Z uh, uh, aspect of, of horse care that we're, uh, overall horse care that we're hopefully having in our whole line. So. My concern with what you're talking about is having two lines is now you're, you're basically com not competing against yourself, but you're lessening the Zebra brand. I mean, you really are. You're saying, yeah, well, you can buy this without the technology. Okay, so the technology is worthless, what you're saying to somebody. Be very cautious about that, because unless you just you know, white label it and you send it out someplace else. But my concern is once you do that, say, yeah, it's great for impact, but it doesn't have the technology. Somebody say, well, your whole business for Zebra was the technology. And now you're telling us we don't need it. And I kind of worry about that as the zebra. Now, it's like you said, you can rebrand a different name, put a different you know, spin on it, but be very cautious about it. I mean, I see that in companies that, well, we can offer this lesser value and make some money on this, but and then, then everybody dies. Sure, and we have given a lot of thought to that. Mark, who's on our cap table, uh, has a lot of opinions about that. And we, are, we want to do that the right way. You know, Mercedes has their top end brand, but they also have the C-Class. And so we plan on being careful with it, but keeping it like that. Uh, I, I think that we... That took, them, that took them like 70 years to get down. I mean, it took a long time to come up with C-Class. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was after making lots and lots of money based on the name. Their name has a brand. You don't have a brand for a couple more years, you know. So just, uh, you know, people can compare things, but they've been around a long time. Um, but, you know, Zebra is brand new. You don't have a brand yet. The, your customer gives it to you. That's my concern. You want your customers to give you that brand, the guys who care about horses, care about their legs, keep them cool, keep them safe, and then all of a sudden you come out shortly before that brand's given to you and say, well, we really don't care about it as much. We have a, this other product. It's good, but it's not as good. I just see there's, there's a problem in, in the psyche and the psychographics of what you're dealing with. No, that's, that's well taken, and we're, we're sensitive to that. Okay, Mike and Dave, um, we've got one last question for you. What can the One Million Cups community do for you guys? Good question. Um, I think that uh, this is exactly what we came for, uh, to, to hear suggestions and to hopefully get beat up a little bit without uh, you know, really getting beat up by an investor. Uh, and so, so I think that's, uh, that's really what we came for, and we, we appreciate uh, the comments.